Now in this tutorial, I'm going to create a PCB based on the schematics that I've already entered into the system. I've already checked through all my footprints and I know that they're correct. I've compiled my system, or I mean my comp compiled my project. I have fixed all the errors and I've checked through all the warnings. So now I'm going to create a PCB. So I was in the project tab before, but I'm going to go to the files tab and if I close some of these I can see in this bottom one here there's a PCB wizard. So I'm going to run the PCB wizard, and it's going to ask what kind of units I want to use. I'm going to use Imperial units, mills, and I'm going to create a custom board size. Now I can make it any size I want, but um, I think I'm going to make mine, uh, let's say, 3 inches by 3 inches. Okay, so... All of these look fine. Uh, it's going to have two signal layers, a top layer and a bottom layer, and no power plants. This is your standard two layer board. Um, so I only have through hole vias. And I have, for the most part, surface mount components. And I do put components on both sides of the board. Well, perhaps not in this design. So, I get, well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Alright, so here you can set some of your rules, but we'll change all these later anyway. But, uh, minimum track size is 8 mils. Um, the minimum via hole size is 28 mils. And the via width is 50 mils. And minimal clearance is 8 mils. Uh, these are some of the rules that work well with advanced circuits with their $33 proto boards. So we finish and is created. This is our working space here. This is our 3 by 3 inch PCB. Now, the first step is to import all the components in our schematic onto this PCB. So, I go to, it's been a while, Okay, the, the problem is that my PCB is not part of my project. So I can't add everything that's in my schematic because the PCB is not part of the project. So I'm going to drag the PCB into my project. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. Just because that's a good idea. Okay, so now I have some more options. When I go to design, I can update schematics or import changes all right so update schematics means if i change my pcb i can update the schematics to reflect changes of the pcb design import changes from the schematics means i'm going to i can change the the schematics and then import the changes into the pcb so i'm going to import changes from the schematics and it gives me a list of things it's going to change. So it's always good to go through these to make sure it's not going to do anything crazy. Now right now, we're just going to import everything, so that's fine. I'm not going to import the rooms because it's a simple design and we don't need rooms. Okay, we're going to execute the changes. Alright, and we're done. And you'll notice that it has added all of our components here off to the side. So, now, before we get too far into this, before we start placing these components, because that'll happen in the next tutorial, I'm going to assign my design rules. So I'll go to Design, and go to Rules. Now, here's a list of all the design rules that it checks when you run a DRC, or Design Rule Check. Now, it's important that you set your rules correctly based on your design, and based on the capabilities of your PCB manufacturer. So I'm just going to check through some of these. Alright. My 
my uh, wire clearance or track clearance is 8 mils, that's fine. Component clearance is 10 mils, that's fine. These things don't matter much to me, neither does the height. Uh, hole size is fine. Okay, this is all fine. All right, routing. Okay, routing the v the via size we've already defined. That's fine. Uh, solder mask expansion actually needs to be expanded um, because advanced circuits has a wider solder mask than you'd think. All right, so we'll change that to five mils. And the other thing I'm going to add, so I have this width requirement that the minimum width is eight mils, but I'm going to add a, a new rule, which I'm going to call power width, and I'm going to say that this applies to the net VCC and the net ground. Okay? So for net VCC and ground, I'm going to set my minimum my preferred, my max I'm going to make pretty big. Alright, so this way for my power lines, my power traces, the minimum width is 25 mils rather than 8 mils. For now, I'm going to save these design rules. I'm going to be sure to save my, my design. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you can make changes to your schematics and then import those changes into the PCB design. So we'll go back to our schematics here. And let's say I decide that it would be really nice to add another test point. So I'm going to add a test point here on this line. And I'm going to call it you know, test. I don't have a good name. Now, notice there's this red line because there are two parts TP1. So, I'm going to change this to TP question mark. And then I'm going to re annotate. And notice it wants to make one change. It wants to change that TP question mark TP4. So, I'm going to accept the change. Save my design. I need to recompile my project. Um, I'm going to check there's no errors. I'll check the warnings, nothing new. So now I'm going to go back to my PCB design and say import changes. Okay, so it wants to match these nets. So you should check to make sure. This really is the same net, and it is. Okay. Alright, so it's going to add this new part. It's going to add the net. It's going to change the net names. Again, I'm not going to add the room. Alright, so everything looks good. You should always check this to make sure it's not doing anything crazy. Alright. And you'll notice that there it is, it added TP4. So throughout your design, you need to, if you make any change to the schematic, update it to the PCB. And uh, you can go the other way as well, but I always make changes to the schematic and then update the PCB. So that's it for this tutorial. The next tutorial will discuss placing these components.